Good afternoon. Welcome to Pike Creek Farm. My name is Renee, and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping. And if you're coming back, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. I do videos on canning, on cooking, on baking, and vintage recipes. And today we're going to do a canning recipe, a pressure canning one. It's the Saturday after Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving night, I took my turkey and I all the bones and everything and I put them into a big stock pot with water and onions and celery and let it cook all night. I added some apple cider vinegar too. And then the next day right before noon, I shut it off and then I strained out all the bones and the extra meat and the vegetables and um, skimmed the fat off and I strained it through cheesecloth and I got six quarts of chicken, Ch turkey, turkeys. So, but I do have, I saved out some, and I have this broth here. And I didn't want to do more just plain stock, but I have like leftover turkey, and I have some potatoes, and I had a couple of carrots. So I'm gonna make turkey pot pie starter, or turkey soup starter, or it will be soup on its own. I'm going to follow the National Center for Home Preservation's recipe or method for making soups, doing your own soup recipe. And it's pretty simple. You just got to make sure that everything you're putting in is actually um, able to be processed, that there is a safe canning method for it. And I'm doing carrots, onions, celery, turkey, potatoes, mushrooms, and peas. They're all good vegetables to have. And what we're going to do is we're going to add all that stuff into this pot and heat everything up. And I'm going to do it in pints. And we'll fill solids halfway full and then the rest up to one inch with the liquid. And then we process them. And I can just take this and eat it as it is. That's why I'm doing pints because Jim likes to go up north and he could just heat this up and eat it the way it is or I can thicken it up and make chicken pot pie, turkey pot pie. I could add a couple of them and make dumplings to go on top. So I just thought the pints, since there's two of us, was gonna give me a little more versatility where I could use it for lunches or for dinners. So let's go make some turkey pot pie starter soup. So here's the pot and I might need to add some more broth to it actually I have a pint from last year but I cut up in my chopper two stalks of celery and two small yellow onions so I'm going to add that into it and we're going to bring this all to a boil on the stove I had like three small carrots I did like four potatoes. Um, this is the leftover turkey. I got some mushrooms. Mushrooms will add flavor to the stock too. And the peas. So, it's quite full. spoon out and stir this all up. Now I'm not going to add a lot of seasoning because I can adjust the seasoning when um, I open the jars. I might add a little bit of thyme to each jar because I do like the flavor of thyme and I did season the broth. Let me taste it. Yeah, it has good flavor. Um, I'll probably add a little more salt and some pepper. Let me do that now before I put it on to cook. Just because the vegetables were in there. So that's probably like a half a teaspoon of salt. And that's maybe a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. This, let's put this on to heat up on the stove now. 
I do have my canner here. I've done my safety check on it. I have the base in the bottom and I have three quarts of water in it. That's what my directions say to do. So make sure you follow your canner's directions. So I'm gonna put this on the stove and I will bring you back when it's heated up. This needs to come to a boil for five minutes. This has come to a boil and I let it boil for five minutes. And now we're ready to fill the jars. So let me get things positioned so that you can see. We want to fill the jars halfway with solids, then the rest of the way with the broth. And I did go downstairs and get another jar of turkey broth from last year, just in case I run low on the broth. With this soup recipe, pints are processed for 60 minutes. So let's get some solids in there. And you want to try and get a variety of all the different veggies. This, I can imagine using it in pot pie, thickening it up, but I could open up a jar and make some chick make some gravy out of the broth and add some extra gravy if needed and stir in noodles make a chicken and rice casserole so a little bit more maybe now let's get just the broth I make a chicken spaghetti that is spaghetti noodles with cream of chicken soup and cheese. Well, I could use this as the base for that. We want this to have one inch head space. So we can put a little more liquid in. Things that you cannot add to this, to can. You cannot add rice. You cannot add noodles, pasta. You can't add fats. You can't add dairy. You can't add any thickeners. You can do all that stuff once you open it up. I used a paper towel dipped in vinegar to clean the edge. And now we're going to put the lid on. I have my, I think I told you already, but I have my canner. Ooh, it's hot. My canner ready. So, there we go. It's really pretty. You can add dry beans that you have rehydrated. You can add so many different vegetables. You could do sweet potatoes. You could do sweet potatoes and black beans and mix up your own taco seasoning and add to it and make like a Southwest turkey soup. I'm not sure how many this will make and if I have enough vegetables for all or how it's gonna end up. I will put the link down below for the directions on how to make your own soup, the guidelines. Finger tight. You don't want it crank it too tight or the, the um, lids can buckle. I'm taking my jars out. I just realized I didn't debubble. Got 
talking and I didn't pay attention. Make sure you debubble to make sure there's no air pockets in there, even though there's a lot of liquid, and then remeasure afterwards. Now I need to wipe that lid again, rim again, and finger tight and pack in. <laughs> So, debubble, 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 measure. I can use a little bit more now. And wipe the rim. I use vinegar to help cut any grease. There's not too much in this soup, but usually when there's meat, that's how I do it. Now I did add a half a teaspoon of thyme leaves to the pot as it was cooking and coming to the boil. So I'm going to keep filling these and I will bring you back. These are the last three. I have seven in there already. So I put my shelf in there because I can double stack in my 23 quart Presto. So in this one jar came a little short on broth, so I just added some water to it. I didn't need to open up that whole jar of turkey broth just for this. So I think this is going to be real versatile from different pasta dishes to soup base to pot pies to turkey and dumplings to uh, rice casserole or you know, just add noodles or rice if you want. So I'm going to put these three on the top rack. So I will end up with 10 pints of these. I already checked to make sure that my lock is loose, that my vent pipe is clear. I blow through it and I look through it. I checked my seal and it seems there's no cracks, it's flexible. Um, let me get this turned the right way. With my Presto, I line up the V's on the right hand side and then twist to lock. If I don't have this lined up right and tight down, it would never build up pressure. So now I'm going to turn the heat up and not to real high yet. I'm going to put it like at seven and a half because I don't want it to build up pressure too quickly or heat too quickly and cause it to um, siphon out. I hope to avoid that. So I have it on like between seven and a half and eight. And what I'm waiting for now is for steam to come out of the vent pipe like a freight train. Just pouring out steam. It's hard to show on a video. Sometimes I can put something behind it. But when that happens, I turn my timer on for 10 minutes. So in the once it does it for 10 minutes, I'll put my weight on. I use 10 pound weight. That's what I use in my area. And once it starts to do a little hula dance, then I set the timer for 60 minutes. When 60 minutes is up, turn off the burner and let everything come back to normal pressure at its own time. Don't try to rush it. And then I can take the weight off and I wait like five minutes and I take the lid off. And I wait about five minutes so the jars are accustomed to the, the cooler air. So I'm gonna have 10 pints of fast food, healthy food, you know, pure, nothing added to it, no chemicals nothing just vegetables and turkey and broth that i made so and if you don't make your own broth like i said don't let that stop you from doing it you can buy broth or you can buy better than bullion and make your own you can hear the steam but you can't see it very well on camera and on my canner my lock pops up about the same time 
I'm going to adjust the heat now. It is up to pressure. I'm going to move it down on my stove. If I move it to four, it'll keep the weight rocking and a little slower than what it is now, which is good. And it's kind of like a hula dance is what you're looking for. So. Here are the finished jars. And there was a pop. Love that sound. So you can see the vegetables bubbling away. And I got 10 pints. If you'd like to see more videos on canning and baking and cooking and vintage recipes, subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, push the like button. It really helps my channel grow. And I appreciate each and every one of you that watch any of my videos or subscribe. See you next time at Pike Creek Farm.